Polling in the United States presidential election have largely concluded as of last night with the coronavirus pandemic resulting in an unprecedented turnout for early and mail-in voting. It has been a wild ride, but will voter survey reflect the final results? With experts saying chances for violence and unrest will climax around this election, has anything happened yet? And with half of the population showing lack of faith in the electoral process and widespread political polarization, how will this election affect American politics in the coming months and years? To answer these questions, I'm joined by Ian Riffelwoltz, professor of history at Sunny Pyre State University and Zhao Hai, research fellow at Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's talk about, first of all, the state of the race. It looks like um, Biden is adversing a huge disadvantage and is leading in Wisconsin. Uh, he's also leading in Nevada and Arizona. Uh, it looks like there is a path to victory, although um, that has been narrowed. What do you think, Ian? Well, at this point, it looks like Joe Biden will be the next president. Uh, most importantly, because he has, uh, appears to have won in Arizona and because he has won in the Nebraska um, uh, extra congressional district, the Nebraska second congressional district, that's, that gives him a path to two, uh, 270 electoral votes along with Michigan and Wisconsin that he can get to even without Pennsylvania. Having said that, Pennsylvania also looks solid for Biden. The overwhelming majority of the votes to be counted will be Biden votes because there'll be uh, mail-in mail -in votes and they'll be largely from Democratic counties. Uh, Georgia also still might well go to Biden, uh, according to the estimates. He's got a better chance of, of winning in Georgia than does uh, Donald Trump because most of the outstanding votes are from Atlanta and other uh, Democratic areas. So it looks solid for, for Biden. Uh, even in Michigan, where Trump holds a very small lead, there, there are well over half a million ballots to be counted, and they're almost certainly going to favor uh, Biden by enough for him to overtake Trump in Michigan. So right. even, if solid Biden, right. even if one gives Georgia and North Carolina and even Pennsylvania to Trump, uh, and Biden takes Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, and Wisconsin, he still has, will have 271 votes. Yeah, because of that Nebraska congressional district, and I believe the main congressional district also would put him at 271, correct? So he doesn't need Pennsylvania, and that's important because Pennsylvania really is the place where Trump is able to make the most uh, trouble, so to speak, with lawsuits because it's going to be counting for a, a couple of days. The fact that he doesn't need Pennsylvania means that the lawsuits won't scare people as much because Biden won't need Pennsylvania. Plus, his trailing by. Uh by Trump uh, with over 20,000 votes. Uh, that is um, quite a challenge over there for you know, Biden to overcome. Um, Professor Zhao Hai, let me go to you. Trump tweeted Wednesday that, quote unquote, we're up big, but they're trying to steal the election. We will never let them do that. Votes cannot be cast after the polls are closed. Also, he declared victory. He said, we did win, and uh, he's asking the Supreme Court to stop counting the votes uh, and the votes coming after 4 a.m. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, first of all, it's illegal to stop counting. I mean, this is uh, American law requires to count every vote and uh, to take in every vote and to have the final result. So whatever Trump is saying is illegal. And also, whatever he's saying, he has said that for a long time while he was campaigning. So this is not something new. Uh, we've been expecting that, and actually, if you look at the, the uh, past couple of weeks before the election, both parties' uh, officials are coming out and denying that they will not recognize uh, the uh, final result of the vote. And also, they're promising that there will be a peaceful transfer of power. So I don't think uh, Trump's words uh, is having any uh, legal terms uh, to support his uh, argument. However, I think his word will incite more violence and more division within the United States. It's going to be uh, creating problems after the election. Uh, even if uh, the result would like to be you know, something that you've described, this is a very thin margin, the final election. So I think it's very difficult uh, for Trump supporters to accept this kind of result. And I think when Trump is saying this, there, uh, he is actually promoting, encouraging these people to come out and protest the final result. 
we have been expecting this actually. Right. Uh, you know, people are writing about uh, on the election day because Trump voters would like to vote. Um, uh, showing up at the election day, therefore, by the end of the day, he might achieve temporary advantage. However, when the votes are all counted, particularly the mailing, uh, mail-in votes, uh, final victory probably belongs to Biden. So we're still waiting for that result. And when this is dragging on, I think there's more possibility there will be social unrest in the United States. Right. Uh, of course, America is a free country. Uh, the president can say whatever he wants. But do you think he has the authority? the legal power to enforce, the Supreme, to enforce what he said, meaning to really force the Supreme Court to, to stop the votes from being counted? I don't think that's a possibility. However, there's another possibility, which is that his lawyers, the, uh, I mean the lawyers from the Republican Party, might challenge the result in certain states, and that those cases could eventually end up in the high court in the Supreme Court. So there is a possibility that the Supreme Court will hear cases related to this election. However, I don't think uh, that would be the case w w in which you know, the Supreme Court mm -hmm. will rule that the, the, the vote will stop counting uh, mm -hmm. when this day is over. Right. Uh, let me remind our viewers in China that uh, we're monitoring the election 227 versus 213. Biden is still leading on the Electoral College vote count. And also, uh, we can see that in Wisconsin, the key swing state uh, in the Midwest, um, Biden is leading. And also in Michigan, uh, he's narrowing the gap with President Trump. Uh, there's only a difference of 16,000 16, votes. Uh, and like we said previously, if Biden carries uh, Nevada, Arizona, plus Wisconsin and Michigan, he will get 271 vote enough to become the next president of the United States. Of course, um, all things are in the air. Uh, there's no certainty that uh, Biden can do that at this point. Uh, Ian, let's go back to the previous topic. Um, are there precedents, precedences whereby, you know, vote count uh, surpasses the midnight of election day? And uh, why would Trump declare vote counting continuing after the election day illegitimate? There are clear precedents for this. First of all, you don't have to go back to the 18th century or the 19th century. In the 2000 election, the, uh, we, didn't, we did not have a winner declared even by the networks. Not that the networks you know, declare officially who the winner is, but we didn't have a network de declaration until well into the morning. You might, you, your viewers might remember Florida was initially called by the networks for Al Gore. Then they took it back. Then about three in the morning, I believe, they, they called the presidency and Florida for George W. Bush. Uh, it's not unprecedented at all. And if you go back further into our history, there have been many examples. Uh, the, there's the famous photograph of President Harry S. Truman holding up the newspaper, a newspaper from Wednesday morning that said, Dewey defeats Truman. So, of course, there you had an example where you know, people, I guess, went to bed assuming that uh, Dewey had defeated Truman, and there was a newspaper that said Dewey defeats Truman, but, of course, Truman defeated Dewey. Th and there, there are countless other examples. Uh, in 1916, Woodrow Wilson went, uh, went to sleep assuming that he had lost the presidency and woke up the next morning having won it because California's votes came in. So uh, long before technology, it, w it was fairly common that people did not know who the president was uh, uh, on election night. But 2000 is the best example. This is not unprecedented. Donald Trump has no authority to stop the vote count. The Supreme Court uh, allowed the Pennsylvania, uh, the Pennsylvania to uh, count ballots that came in up to three days after the election was over, as long as they were postmarked before the election. That's also very common. Military ballots have come in traditionally a day or two or three after the election because they're obviously mailed in from overseas. If it had not been for late arriving military ballots in Florida in 2000, George W. Bush would not be president. So even the Republican Party knows that ballots that come in after Election Day, as long as they're postmarked properly, should be counted. In fact, in Florida in 2000, the Republicans fought to have votes that were not postmarked properly still counted. And, they, and those votes were counted. And numbers suggest George W. Bush would not have been president had he not gotten those votes that shouldn't have been counted. So there's no way that Trump is going to be able to say that those votes should not be counted. It's impossible. Yeah, he says uh, whatever works in his favor, I suppose. Um, Professor Zhao Hai, how do you look at this?
because President Trump took issue with mail-in voting, and there are a lot of those this year. Um, why would the president uh, make mail-in voting an issue? Because today he also declared that uh, there has been voter fraud on the American public. Well, because it's clearly uh, for the reason of COVID-19, because of the spread uh, and this uncontrollable spread of COVID-19 in the United States, a lot of people cannot participate in the uh, personal uh, vote at the, pre at the uh, voting day. Therefore, they choose to mail in their ballot. However, because of a lot of those people who do not support Trump choose uh, that option, and uh, those people tend to be Democrats. Therefore, uh, Trump really uh, unhappy about this kind of uh, massive mail-in ballot that is uh, uh, more prone to uh, Biden and his campaign. So I think at this point, he's made that very clear. For his own political interest, he does not want to uh, view uh, votes by mail and votes by person as equal votes. He wanted to just count the uh, you know, vote by person because those are the people um, he's encouraging, uh, he's telling them that the COVID-19 is just a big flu or something that should not be paid attention to and the economy should reopen and people should uh, do, you know, do business as usual. So I think this is irresponsible to a very large extent and also this is a, a very political choice, very much a political mm -hmm. choice to deny the uh, legality of those votes by mail. Uh, Ian, uh, let's face it, the Democrats pre predicted an easy victory for Biden, even a landslide. It didn't happen. Uh, there has been a big turnout by you know, Republican <laughs> voters across the country. And um, what do you make of that? Uh, how divided is the country? Okay, I mean, we don't have the popular vote count yet. So now we're talking about measuring support. But, but Biden is already ahead by almost, uh, almost 3 million in the popular vote. That will only grow. Uh, if you remember four years ago, Donald Trump was ahead in the popular vote uh, on the night of the election. And the late coming votes uh, put Hillary Clinton over the top for the, for the popular vote. My guess is that Biden will end up winning the popular vote probably by about 4%. That is a significant victory in terms of popular support. It's, a, it's actually, if, uh, if you remember in 2012, Barack Obama beat Mitt Romney in the popular vote by a little over 3%. It's just that the Electoral College has, because of population distribution, become even more skewed than it was in 2012. So if you want to say that Biden won the popular vote by more than Barack Obama, which it looks like he will from 2012, that's a pretty strong result for Joe Biden. Having said that, it's not as strong as Democrats expected from the polls. Uh, it looks like Democrats will have a tough time winning the United States Senate, which people thought that they would be able to win, although they weren't as confident about that, obviously, as Biden's election. So I would say the Democrats won the election, assuming things play out as we expect. They won it by a solid margin. Um, but on the other hand, you know, Hillary won the, won the popular vote four years ago as well. But Biden improved, I think, on her margin by about 2 percent, probably. And, and I think that's a solid, if, if not uh, uh, overwhelming, result in terms of, of pure popular support for the Democrats. Yeah, but I, I suppose that some polls uh, still weren't that accurate, uh, especially those uh, polls in the, you know, for example, in Ohio and uh, in North Carolina, Georgia. But uh, that's all the time we have for our discussion. Thanks so much, Ian Rofowitz, professor of history at Sunny Empire State University, and uh, Zhao Hai, research fellow at Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Thanks both. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, China makes public its next five-year plan. What are the goals and missions of France?